Hello. Thank you for participating in the Wellness Way brought to you by the ACP Southern, Southern California um, Region 3 chapter. My name is Sammy Fung, and I'm a medical student at UC San Diego, uh, representing ACP Southern California Region 3 chapter. Today, I'm honored to interview Dr. Howard Williams, a primary care physician at Scripps Mercy Hospital. Dr. Williams, can you share with us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Good morning, Sammy. Yes, you mentioned my name, Howard Williams. I'm a general internist. Uh, I have been in private practice of internal medicine across the street from Mercy Hospital in Hillcrest uh, since 1989 and in, in private practice since 1986. Um, I'm in a group of uh, four general internists. We have two nurse practitioners. Um, we have um, um, employees that have been with us for 30 years um, and uh, uh, a, a, a wonderful uh, practice of uh, general internal medicine. I've also been the governor of, a, of this uh, region for the ACP and uh, involved with the ACP for a number of years. And it's nice to be with you this morning. Thank you for taking time away from your baby. <laughs> Um, no, thank you so much for joining us this very early morning. Um, I'm curious to know, you have a long history uh, or a long career in medicine. How did you uh, choose this career in medicine? How did you decide your path? And um, can you tell us a little bit more about kind of the decisions that you made along your career path? When I graduated from USC, I thought that I really wanted to be an emergency room doctor. Boy, am I glad I didn't do that now, but uh, uh, I, I went to Fresno with the intent of uh, doing a residency in, in uh, emergency medicine. And while I was there doing my rotations, um, I really enjoyed the primary care aspect of it, getting to know my patients, the clinic uh, part of it. Uh, and I had a brilliant idea. Uh, I went to, to the program director for emergency medicine. I said, look, we keep seeing these same patients over and over and over again, and we can keep them out of the hospital and keep them well if we'll just set up a little continuity clinic and we can avoid having them keep coming back to the emergency room. They'll be better. We won't have these frequent flyers that keep coming in, then it'll be wonderful. And he said, you know, you miss the whole point of emergency medicine because we don't want to do continuity. We want to do, you know, acute care. So that's when I, when my path split and I went off into uh, to internal medicine. And it was the best, one of the best choices I've ever made. Yeah, that's uh, super, in some ways, daring to go up to your program director and say like, hey, I have this amazing new idea. Um, I wonder- Well, I, I, thought um, it, I thought it was a great idea, but uh, uh, apparently <laughs> he didn't think so. Well, I mean, it's what got you established really, or yeah, starting your, uh, your path in medicine. And I'm wondering if you um, kind of going along that have any advice for rising medical students or um, current residents and trainees as they're figuring out their path. Um, how do they kind of discern some of these things like you did and kind of start to hone in on what they should really be going into where their strengths are? I think the most important step is to find something that you're really passionate about. Um, you all went into medicine, uh, probably not so that you could uh, be rich. Um, you had interest in science, you had interest in people, um, but you need to choose a, choose a pathway that, uh, that brings you to a point where you're getting satisfaction out of what you do. And for me, that is the relationship that I have with my patients. How do you walk that fine line between being able to spend time with your patients um, combating burnout, um, as well as maintaining your professional and personal life uh, and keeping that rich and full. How do you, how do you walk all those? Yeah. Um, you know, Sammy, I was looking at some statistics last night. They have a, a physician survey of 13,000 doctors, and I'm actually one of them that completes a survey every year. And um, in uh, 2021, 42% of doctors said that they were burned out. By 2022, it went, had gone up to 47%. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you can all help um, 
see what the what the fields were that they experienced the greatest burnout. Number one was my former career path of emergency medicine right. that went up from 43% to 60% burnout. Uh, critical care medicine, again, pandemic didn't treat it well, 50, 56% burnout. Obstetrics, which was a little bit of a surprise to me at 53%, infectious disease at 51, and family practice, also another surprise to me at 51%. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the challenge uh, to, for a lot of people is the amount of paperwork that you have to do. And 60% of doctors identify too much paperwork as, as uh, one of their major reasons for burnout. And the computer hasn't helped with all that, by the way. And the other one was uh, too much time at work. And that's a big uh, factor in trying to avoid burnout. My wife and I uh, take a lot of time off. Uh, every two to three months, we will take two to three weeks off. The analogy I use is take a one pound weight and hold it out to your side. It's very, very easy to do. But after you've held that weight out there for a period of time, it gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And eventually in your practice, you'll, if you don't take breaks, you'll end up uh, feeling like it's Groundhog Day. Like every single day is the same again and again and again. And uh, travel for us gives us the opportunity to take a break, change, change your scenario, uh, and then when you come back, you feel refreshed. So my saying is, there's only one thing better than travel, and that's returning home from travel. <laughs> I love that. Um, and I guess just to kind of take what you're saying and summarize it a little bit for medical students and trainees, residents, and fellows who maybe can't take two to three weeks off every couple of months, I guess it would be to kind of take the time during the weekends or whenever you have the day off to really decompress when you come home, maybe not think about work and other things and try to develop a richer, fuller life outside of medicine. Um, it well, sounds you like are all very familiar with burnout. There's no question. You, you didn't get in the position that you're in without uh, spending a lot of time and a lot of effort, a lot of self-sacrifice. Uh, the bad news for you medical students is you still have internship and residency to go. And uh, that's challenging. It's also very rewarding because you're gonna be learning something that you love. Um, so it will be a challenge. The good news is when you get done with that and if you make the right career choices, you can find yourself in a position where uh, you get uh, rewarded handsomely and you can also have a wonderful balance of uh, work and life. Um, can you tell us about something that's thought you'd be outside of medicine or uh, maybe a place that you've been to, an experience that you've had that was uh, your favorite? Well, we've been to all seven continents. So uh, um, a couple, about four years ago, we, we went to Antarctica, which was our seventh continent. And that's where our oh, son wow. uh, proposed to his, uh, his, his wife down there, which was a pretty unique experience. Um, I've climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, so being on top of Mount Kilimanjaro was was wonderful. Um, so our travels have been have been uh, wonderful, and and we look forward to it each time. <clears throat> it, it's much harder for um, for medical students. You're locked into your into your schedule, um, and when you are when you do choose your career path, um, you you will have a choice to make between being an employed physician or being a self-employed physician. And part of what allows me to have the quality of life I have is that I'm self-employed and I can make those choices like taking the amount of time off that mm -hmm. I do. Uh, my three associates are all younger than I am. They don't take the time off that I do, but they also don't see as many patients as I do during the day. Believe it or not, they'll see nine or 10 patients a day um, uh, but they leave the office at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So they've chosen to have an easier uh, workday schedule and get home. They have younger families that they, that they spend time with. So getting home and, and spending the time with them is more important than taking off as much time as I do. Yeah, I think uh, that's really good advice is just trying to 
find um, ways to uh, do things, uh, find, finding ways in medicine to do things that you're really passionate about. Um, and then also uh, structuring your life in a way that uh, medicine isn't all you do, but you can really um, make time for things that give you meaning um, and kind of give you a richer life um, overall. I think um, it's, it's really great insight. Um, and I just want to thank you so much for taking the time uh, to share your experience with us today. It's uh, really helpful to hear insights from experts in the field. Um, and I think our viewers will most definitely ben benefit from the advice that you shared today with us um, so that we can really have a healthy perspective of um, focusing on wellness, even as it seems you know, that this career of medicine can sometimes be all encompassing, um, especially I think during training. Yeah. So thank you so much for uh, sharing with us today, Dr. Williams. My pleasure. And Sammy, just one other thing that uh, the medical students may want to keep in mind. You have the benefit of youth, um, but you need to, to take care of that. You need to take care of yourselves. Uh, you know, sleep is at a premium, especially for new mothers, uh, but also for all medical students. Uh, you need to get the, enough sleep. Uh, you need to keep up your exercise routine. You need, need to take care of your own spiritual self, um, keep yourself physically uh, healthy and emotionally healthy as, as best you can. Thank you so much, Doctor.